Tonight's fighting is sanctioned by the IBF and the South African Boxing Control Commission. I'd like to introduce the IBF official supervisor at ringside, Hiawatha Knight from the United States. Assisting the new IBF representative for South Africa, Mr. Shepard Kibitz of the National Commission. Our judges for tonight from the United States, John Stewart, South Africa, Judge Lulamo Mtia and Judge Alfred Bakwana. And our timekeeper tonight, Simon Pue. In the words of Michael Buffer, let's get ready to rumble. in the black and white trunks, weighing in at 53.2 kilograms. He's had 14 fights, that's 10 wins, two draws and two losses. Hailing from the sunny coast of California, Sam Stewart. And the champion in the black and gold at 53.42 kilograms, he has had 16 fights and 16 wins. His first title fence tonight, Mbolelo Botile. Well, the coach, the buzz of the rules. Referee Christodoulou calls the fighters to the corner, to the center of the ring, go back to their corners, and we're ready for the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. Mbolelo Botila, he's defending against Sam Stewart, an American fighting on Independence Day. Do you think this will be any chance for Uncle Sam and the Stars and Stripes? Well, it's going to be interesting. As I said earlier, that a great day in boxing history. Are we going to see a great fight and see something great happen here tonight? It's Botila's first defense of the title. He won in such stunning fashion when he knocked out Harold Mestri a couple of months ago. That wasn't here, that was at the FNB Stadium. Right, it's the back. You can see that uh, Stewart came in at... Uh... Oh, that's a really good right hand there from Mbolelo Bottini. Yes, a right hand from Bottini with him and staggered Stewart all the way back to the corner. I don't think Stewart was expecting anything of the kind. He'd been hit now by pretty good punches from Bottini. And we, you know, there is the idea, is Bottini a phantom punch of the way he knocked out Harold Mystery? But by crumbs, if he throws more right handers like that, he's going to knock out a lot of people. Sam Stewart in a lot of trouble here at the start of the first round of this first title defense for Benilo Bottini. Trying to get over the effects of that right hand that banged off the side of his face. Trying to keep it in close, but he's got his hands full, keeping away from a very determined champion. Well, I can see that Sam Stewart is very worried. He's got that like, worried look on his face, and that shot really shook him. He's only been only lost two fights in his career, one early on at Partika. So uh, Sam keep the punches up. He's got his hands full out tonight. And he's walking back into Batila. He's he's really trying to get into the man. Batila quite happy to fly back on the ropes, keep his elbows in and protect himself as Stewart tries to fight back here. But Batila obviously establishing himself these days as a pretty good puncher. Well, a very good start jump for the IVF uh, Bantamweight champion. Looking very confident, a very confident uh, Bottiglia tonight. He knows he's the champion and he wants to keep that title. Confidence in that, showing in that style of his. He didn't used to hold his left hand across the body like that. It was always ready for the prodding left. But here he's holding it low down across the body, full of confidence as this young champion. Oh, good left hook coming there from Bottiglia. Finding his mark, finding his man. Sam Stewart, having gone the distance and drawn with maybe Jake Butler, that was given the chance of being a very good opponent in this fight, but those right-handers from Batelio are really catching him. He's going to have to do something to keep out the way of them. He hasn't landed one punch on the champion yet, has Sam Stewart. And the champions landed three good, four good right hands to the jaw. Stop! But short there, just before that bow, a little bit short of that from the tier. Wow. Very good start for this, the Vanderbilt champion in the RBF. What an excellent opening round that was for Mbalala Bottini. 
trying to continue to hit this guy in the head. Move your feet when you punch, right? Yeah. And aim the right hook, let the right hook go, but turn him into it. Every one of your shots ain't gotta be hard. You hear me? Give me a walk, give me a good breath. Give me a deep breath. Well, here we have the slow-mo, that right hand that bounced off. Stewart's jaw shook him, sent him staggering back into the corner. That was right at the beginning of the fight. And that was Botilla's way of sitting his stamp on the fight right at the beginning. start to this uh, IVF Benamite title fight. Oh. A very good start by the champion and he's asserted himself early on and Stuart knows he's going to have a hard night fighting here tonight. He's going to have to produce something good if he's going to keep out the way of that. From the start in the corner the American trainer of Batilla telling him use your feet more don't just stalk after your man use your feet and throw your right hand with more aim. Well if he throws it with the kind of aim that he hit that first punch in the first round He's going to do a lot of damage during this fight. It's quite interesting tonight that uh, Sam Stewart came in at 53 kilograms, just slightly over 53, which is just on three kilograms heavier than when he fought Baby Jake down in Durban. Of course, well, if you look at his record, he's only really pulled down to just above the flyweight limit on two occasions. Most of his fights hey! have been the back in the junior bantams or actually in the bantamweight division itself. And I see twice he actually fought as a junior featherweight. Exactly. So I think he's more comfortable at the bantamweight, uh, and he won't have problems with stamina tonight. He should not have. Well. Matilla keeping the fight at long range. He wants to set his man up with the left jab and throw the right. He knows his right hand can go through. Strange, semi-crouching style he's adopting. Showing a lot of confidence here, showing no fear for Sam Stewart. He sort of draws Stewart with the left jab, lets him come in on him, and then a short right comes right through, and that's the punch that's worrying Stewart. Stewart's not known as a knockout puncher, so I don't think he's in the fear for Stewart as far as power is concerned. But he's, he's got good lateral movement, he showed in the fight against Jacob Matlala. Well, Matlala said afterwards that Stewart's one good thing is his rapier left hand, it was a very good left hand, but it's not much in evidence here. Stewart actually backing off more than anything else. Throws a tentative left and then moves away as fast as he can, knowing that if he doesn't get that left hand back as a cover defense, that right hand Batil is going to come over at the top. And there it does. That one shook uh, Stewart again. And I think that first uh, that first right hand that got in there by uh, Batil, uh, upset uh, Stewart and it's got him right out of his rhythm. He said Frank work his way back into the fight and that's not very easy. Well, it's the stalking Botila here going forward after his man. Oh, a good left jab. That puts Stewart's head right back on his shoulder and the right goes through. And this is Botila now moving into a bit of gear. Throwing punches. He rattles Stewart with that punch, and another one goes, and Stewart throwing shots from long range, hoping they'll get there, but he's getting tagged by Batilla. Well, he can't take too many of those. Oh! Another very good round for the champion. I want you to get out there and forget his head. Go to his body and put your punches together. You follow what I'm saying? I don't know what you're doing. You said you dictate the base. You're the champion of the world. You hear me? You're the champion. He's the challenger. Treat him like that, all right? You're the bigger man. You're missing a lot of time. Well, there we get slow mo, and you see that very good left hand from Batilla that pushed back, snapped back Stewart's head. Stewart's supposed to be the man with a good left hand. There was Batilla throwing, pushing out one of the best left jabs you've seen. And back went Stewart's head. Bang goes in that punch. That's a really good left jab from from Batilla. And I, I think if he follows up that kind of punch more often, gets in quicker, uses his feet like 
Bubba Ad, uh, Stott has been telling him we're going to see a devastating young fighter here. We're into round three of this uh, IBF Bantamweight title fight scheduled for 12 rounds. It's a very composed Mbalila Batilia tonight. Stewart trying to make a fight of it, trying to keep it in close. Getting himself a bit caught, tied up with the ropes, but while he's flailing away, he's not really landing very much. But Taylor got a pretty good defense. He's, he knows how to box does this battle, my champion. And he's picking the punches off and he's landing with the other little short uh, shots in the inside there. Stewart's battling to work his way through the uh, champion's guard. He's got no uh, idea how to get to Batil. Batil can command in the center of the ring, and uh, Stewart's got a real problem with his hands here. Oh, another left hand. The left hook followed the right hook there. That struck Stewart again. He's taking a, a lot of good punches at Stewart. He's showing pretty well, but he's getting hit, and that's what's counting because he really isn't getting anything back to Batil. Does get in the odd left hand now and again. But Patella covering up there. The better than him attack him on the ropes. And it's after a flurry of blows like that, it's Stewart who backs up. Patilla unravels the mess and pushes his man backwards. across Batilla's jaw there and he in turn gets hit with the left hand this the style of Batilla's is what intrigues me it's, it's obviously the American style training and he's got the American style stance the right hand drop low the left hand flashes up from the midriff and he's using the counter very well as, as Stewart rushes in he counters him and that's when he scored he's got a good few shots there I get the impression that he's trying to draw Stuart more. He's, he's trying to get Stuart to come into him so that he can throw that right hand. But Stuart keeps backing off and that, making it a, a somewhat elusive target at times for Batilla. Well, I think that Stuart has realized he can't trade with Batilla. He hasn't got the power, so he's got to work from the outside. He isn't going to be able to do very much else, though, Ron. That's his trouble. Because without trading, he's not getting in there, and Batilla can keep him away as much as he wants to. But Batilla is the master of the long range. Well, some good 
tactics there, Bob, until he moved to turn his man around. He's learning all the time. He's only had 16 fights. This is his 17th fight, and uh, he's coming a long way. But I think winning a title gives a lot of fighters uh, a lot of confidence. Oh, it's given him a great deal of confidence. You can see that. The way he's stalking around this ring like the old veteran knowing exactly what he, he is doing and what he wants to do. Well, he's finding it a little bit difficult at times to get his movements going perfectly against this smooth and moving little challenger. But that's really all that Sam Stewart's able to do. He's got to move smooth, he's got to keep out of the way because every now and again one of those good shots like that right hand land on him and he gets into trouble. And his right are really shaken now uh, Sam Stewart. Taylor very much in command of the situation here. Oh, yes. He's picked up the pace again in this round. He's much slower in the third round, but he's right in command during the, the fight. He's going into his man, opening him up with a jab, throwing the right hand over the top, and he's catching Stewart with a close time. Stewart gallantly fighting back, but he hasn't got any power, really, and it, but Taylor realizes it, and so he's not too worried. He's just coming forward, moving on to his man all the time. For that, that uh, Stewart is uh, from Liberia. He's based in California in the USA. He's 26 years old. He's the older two. But he was only 22 years old. So he's still got a long way to go. And the uh, young man has got a great future. That's the one mistake Stewart can't afford to make when he comes in. Leaves himself open like that and he collected left hands to the head and more of them go in with a one or two good shots from the tail and over there. Stewart would be in a lot of trouble. Because he'd been a bit dazed. As the round ended, that was Matilo right on top of the scene. A very good right hands coming in at the end of the round. He's really shooting Sam Stewart in Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. Now you get back out there and let your punches go. The problem is you're not moving this right leg. You hear me? Give it a deep breath. Look, you're a much bigger man than this guy, but you can't continue to try to hit him on the head. You got to go ahead and work the body, and he, when you stop him, then you can work on the head. You hear me? Hear me? Well, here we have slow-mo. That left jab of Patilla's going through. And when he does land it, it lands with enough power to push Stewart back so that he can get both a right and then a following left in. One after the other. That means three shots in a row that Stewart has to take every time the left uh, goes through. And that is really wearing down Stewart. Well, uh, pinpoint shots, guys, right on the jaw. And they really stunned Stewart. Stay in the corner. Now we're into round five. We're a very interesting fight, Joe. And so far, it's been all the champion. You see, the challenger hasn't really got into uh, any sort of action any sort of stride that could make him look as though he was really a danger at this stage he's doing more of surviving than anything else occasional spasmodic burst but there's that Batila left jab and it's really the Batila jab not the Stewart jab that's dominating the proceedings here well, he's taking command right from the first round and he stamped his authority on the fight and he, he's let uh, Stewart know that he's a champion Left welt looming up underneath the a welt looming up underneath the left eye of uh, Stewart. He's been hit on that cheekbone so often now. I'm not surprised. The eye is starting to close, and this is only the fifth round. Well, it's interesting here. Malcolm Stock tells Batilla between rounds to work the body. He's been head hunting right throughout the fight, and uh, maybe he should go at the body to slow Stewart down. Well, he's been told by his corner enough in between each round. They say. Stop head hunting, go for the body. Bring him down, wear him down. But he, he isn't listening to that. He's going as a head hunter all the way. Perhaps he feels that he's getting through with a head shot so comfortably, he may as well keep doing it. But you do get the idea that now, if he's landed a couple of good body shots, that might swing the fight even quicker his way. Back 
walking off fast now, Stuart. And Botelho right on top of him. It's mainly one-way traffic here. Well, there's a little bit of blood coming. Is it from the eye or from the nose of uh, Sam Stewart? A little trickle of blood there on his face. Offering very little back. Trying, but there's not much coming through. And Botelho really is asserting his super superiority at this stage. got to go with the body, he hasn't gone for the body once in this round, but ignoring the instructions of his uh, corner. And possibly he's got to get inside and get a few body shots in, which will slow Stuart down. There's blood coming down there. Now look at some of his nose, it looks like a little bit of blood coming from the nose of the challenger. Well, Stuart now starting to look the worst for wear. Well, he's been taking a lot of right hands right from the first round. He's offering very little back in return, trying to be defensive, occasionally swinging one, but he hasn't got much to, to come back with. An excellent job for the chapter. Put your hands down. Give me a deep breath. Let me see you. Let me see you. Now, come on, come on. Vaseline, Z. Look here. Vaseline, Vaseline. Okay. Give, me, give, me, give me the water. Give us water. Give me a deep breath. You're not giving me time. You're not working on that. Are you okay? You okay? Huh? Give me a deep breath. Okay, let's see. Let me see. Dude, when you throw the right hand, I want you to let the left hand go. We're letting three, four punches. I don't want this. One hey, punch. if you think you're going to get this guy out of here with one shot, you're That's wrong. All you give me a deep breath. 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 Move your feet and go out there and punch. This is a small guy. You cannot afford to miss. You miss on top. He's underneath you. Round six coming up. And Malelo Botile has been told in his corner, if you think you're going to take this guy out with one punch, think again. Maybe some wise words there because Sammy Stewart, for all his shortcomings in this fight, is a tough little customer. He's taken good shots, he's taken them well, and he's still there. Botella picks up the pace every now and again, then goes back to that walking style. He needs, as his corner tells him, move your feet more, get more into the action, throw more punches, and follow with the left hook off to the right hand. Well, he's got to work underneath and work the body and then go for the head, and he's not doing this. He's got to throw punches in bunches. He's throwing one, two at a time, and he's trying to take out uh, Stuart with one shot. And this is where he's making a mistake. The thing is that when he does land that good left jab of his, he can follow through with two or three more shots and have Stewart on the defensive with them all in their mouth. At least two of them get through each time. He knows he's in command, yeah, and uh, he's just taking it easy. Of what, should, what is happening when the teal really unleashes? He, he can land three or four shots with nothing coming back from Stewart. Right. Well, Stewart looks in good condition, but he's been taking a bit of a pounding in the last two or three rounds. And can he go 12 rounds at this pace? Oh, he's in trip condition as this little fighter. He's fit. He can go the distance if he has to, but. He's going to take an awful lot of punishment along the way unless something dramatic happens to change his style and his whole approach to the fight. Now he's trying to give it all he's got and what he's really doing is banging in shots against the elbows and gloves of Batila. He's quite happy to let him go on with a little bit of that. That's all, but he has got the strength, he's got the edge on him and he knows it. So he just lets him bang away and then pulls out and comes back at him. After that expansion of energy, Stewart finds himself again on the receiving end as Batil turns on the pressure, forces him backwards, left hands going in, and rights to follow, and now it's all Batil. Action galore. Now he's really stepping up the pace. It's getting a cracking pace now, and this is what he needs to do. Keep on top of his man. Keep playing those shots. A left hook like that. It's hurt Sammy Stewart right down to his, t his toes. Then he makes a mistake again, he backs off and uh, he lets his man off the hook. 
He's got to throw more punches. Because I'm sure he's got the power to take out Stewart. Slow motion again, and you, the hooks coming in from Patila. This is where Stewart tried to force him onto the ropes, try to keep him going back for those few moments when he was on top but not really scoring much. And then Patila swings him around, and in no time, it's the champion back in command of the entire situation. Well, you get the impression that uh, the champion is fighting well with himself. He's just pacing himself. He's not overextending himself. So looks calm and collected his corner, listening to his corner man, Malcolm Stott. We're into the seventh round of this IBF Bantamweight title fight with the champion, Mbalele Batil, completely in command here in the seventh round. Yeah, the halfway stage, and it's not even a halfway fight it's really one-way traffic stewart has put up occasional forms of resistance but he hasn't had much to offer in return and but taylor has really outboxed him out jabbed him out hooked him out done everything and a good right hand goes in now it's but taylor back to the stalking situation looking for his man looking for the opening the jab and the right hand to go through after it. I think that the champion's got to pick up the pace here. He's completely in command. And uh, he should pick up the pace. And I'm quite sure he can take Stewart out before the end of the 12 rounds. Yes, he does give the impression of being perhaps a little bit languid at times. You know, when he, he could be doing so much more. He'll, he'll throw good punches, he'll hurt Stewart, he'll have him backing up, and then he'll get back to the good old stalking operation. Not like that, though. That was a good left and right hand that went through. But he's throwing them in one-twos, one-twos. Get there again. It's, Stewart's a difficult target. He's got that good lateral movement, and it's not always that easy to get to him. He has Stuart, really speaking, so much at his mercy that he could be trying a variety of shots. If he opened up with four or five shots in a, in a barrage in one concerted movement, I think you'd find Stuart in an awful lot more trouble than he is. Mm, very little happening this round. Not much coming in from either fighter. Stewart, and he's done it on quite a few occasions during the fight. Uh, I believe he should pick up the pace. He's, he's fighting at too slow a pace. Stop! Corner. It's still or something. Botilla, you're champion of the world. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, we work every day in the gym. Am I right? Am I right? Where you from, Duncanville? You don't think I'd want to get up out of there? So let me ask you something. I want you to get out there. I want you to throw some punches. I'm sitting there pleading with you to do something that we do every day. Okay. 
And Stewart is what will not be in the fight. And you can see he's possibly throwing him too far out. He's got to get inside a lip and go to get the strength in his punches, which he's not doing. Well, that's better. There's more. He, he needs to be doing this, you know, up to the end of the last round. The end of the last round. This fight was starting to get positively boring. It was just the same old story round after round and nothing positive was happening other than Patil was in command and he was doing the right thing. Now that's better. A jabby left, he follows quickly with the right, but he needs to keep going like that. Throw more, bring him underneath. It's a complete command, he's got to get in tight, tight that to it. That's the type of punch you want to see. He hurt, he hurt Stewart with that one right hand up. That was a banging shot. He, now he's, he's looking for another one to land like that. Stewart is in trouble. And this is what Patila needs to be doing. That little bit of a verbal battery that he took in the corner at the end of last round has done him some good. And now he is really coming out. This is what he needs to do. Keep going, throwing punches. goes through. Stuart battling to keep going. And yet the monk's still on that. Stuart still got that good lateral movement and he's starting in quite a few of those punches. The field's not landing with everyone as he should. Quick! Go back. That is the first punch underneath the guard that Batil is throwing and he should have been doing lots more of those he's not working the body no body shots coming in he's got to do something about work the body and get inside he's in complete he command but he is he can well, he, do much better he's jabbing and he's landing with a jab and then standing back he's not doing anything after it up on a, on a commanding round for the champion but it's still not good enough Some action from that uh, eighth round, yeah. And you can see that I ran right from Batil, but he's not throwing enough of those shots. He's got to throw them in bunches. So one, two, three combinations. He's got the power, and he knows that uh, Stuart can't hurt him. And do what we do in the gym right here. So this guy ain't nothing. But you follow us in. You hit the guy on top of him, you hurt him. And what do you do? You go back to the head. Stay downstairs. Do it. What is this guy? Well, tell him. He's running. I love it. Well, it's round nine. Imbolela Butil defending his IVF World Bantamweight title against Sammy Stewart. And up to now, well, I don't think that Sammy Stewart's really taken a round. It's been Batil all the way. But, you know, I think the whole problem here is that we're seeing something unfold in front of us. That Batila is the kind of fighter who, if he is attacked and put under pressure, really comes out at his best. But when he's got to stalk after a man, he's like so many other composed, confident fighters, he just goes forward and does what he has to do without overexerting himself. Well, he knows he's got the fight, and uh, why should he do more? He's composed, and uh, he just doesn't know. Well, 
worth a bit better from the champ. Good shots coming there from the champion. Bang the left hook off the chin. Sammy Stewart making a, trying to make a fight of it. And this is when Batil should be at his best. When Sam Stewart comes on top of him, this is when he should be picking off his shots and stopping his man. But all credit to Sammy Stewart, a gutsy little fighter. He's been right in front of Batil all the way. He hasn't stepped back. And he's trying to make a fight of it. One good right hand banged off Stewart's jaw. He took it well and he actually crowded on top of Batil. Referee Stan Christodoulou, who's referring his 69th world title fight tonight. Uh, must be closing on the record of all-time record for a number of world title fights. Can't be many other referees in the world ahead of Stanley Christodoulou. And handling the fight very confidently again tonight, as, as usual. Well, this is only Sammy Stewart's 15th pro fight. Good amateur record. His 15th pro fight, but he gives you the impression straight away of he's the kind of fighter that's going to be around for quite a long time. Takes a shot well, he's taken three in a row there, taken them extremely well. He's a surviving type, but right now he's getting hit, and he's getting hit with good shots from Mbolana Botina. The champion's just picking him off now. A complete command, and he knows it. Taylor finding his target better now. The left hook going in, but he should be doing more. He should actually be firing on all cylinders, and he isn't. At this stage of the fight, then he should have picked up the pace and throwing three, four punches at a row. He's still throwing one punch at a time, which is not good enough. If he comes against better opposition, he'll be in trouble. But possibly he's only fighting as good as he wants to, because he knows the opposition is not so good. He looks like a lazy fighter, and you get a lot of fighters like this. When the opposition's better, they will lift their, their fight plan, they'll come back faster. Well, that's the old story. He, he's fighting as well as the opposition will allow him. And, and that's what it amounts to. He's in total command. Total command, but Sam Stewart isn't attacking him, and he's just going through the motions and winning pretty comfortably. Oh, Dennis, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Are you hurt? Well, I can see Batil possibly going to land. Oh, he got pushed off with the right hand. One of the few that Sammy Stewart's landed. But there again, that right hand came Batil, but only throwing the one and then missing with the left. And that's not good enough. He's got to throw two, three on the target. But fighting a real lazy fight here tonight is uh, Inbalela Batil. Trouble is those right handers too are being thrown from too far out. They're not carrying much power behind them, and that's that's what letting uh, Stewart off the hook so often. We're into oh. round ten of this IBF uh, bantamweight title fight with the champion Umbrella Batil from South Africa in complete control against his uh, challenger from Liberia, who's based in the USA. It's interesting to note that uh, Sam Stewart is 26 years old and Batil is 22 years old. Uh, Sam Stewart only started his professional career in 92, and uh, Bertil at the young age started in 89. Ah. Well, <laughs> Stewart, of course, from Liberia, as you say, four years in the United States. Somebody said to him the other day, Sammy, are you a Democrat or a Republican? He says, I'm a Los Angeles man. Well, he's done very little yet tonight. All he's done is shown courage and uh, he's soaking up a lot of punches here. He's just been too small to get to the champion. Getting beaten to the punch by the left jab from Batila. Batila's left jab has worked well here. There it goes. It, it's finding its target. But you, you have the feeling when it does land so well, you want him to come through with it, he's not. The crowd calling to Batila, go, go, go. But he's prepared just to jab, jab, stand off. I think it's getting pretty frustrating to his corner as well. 
they're getting worked up in between each round in, in the in between rounds now they're really going at him in that corner he's taking more punishment in their words than he is from sammy stewart well it's easy for them to talk he's inside there with a man who's moving got very good movement to sammy stewart and possibly it's quite difficult to get to him at times and uh, this is making it difficult for Batil. Taylor actually back. going backwards. I think with the thought in mind of maybe Sam Stewart will come out and attack him, and that's what he wants. He wants to get into a bit of a, a punch up. I think that's what's really needed for Sammy Stewart to open up, and then we'll see the better part of it, Taylor. He's got to get in close and possibly counter him. But each time it's one punch. One or two. Oh, a good right hand there. Landed and another one. Bang off Sammy Stewart's jaw. The little fellow from Liberia showing lots of pluck here. Staggered a couple of times. Stop! And as the round ends, he is in a little bit of trouble. That's what the deal should have been done, in, done earlier on the fight. The last two seconds of the fight is trying to play. Bunches of punches, which we need. Well, we have a bit of slow motion here, and we all also have a, a slow. Chocha laws have been sung in the background. It even faded out. There's not enough enthusiasm coming among the singers at the moment. Well, it's not a very exciting fight. It's just the champion going through the motions and picking off his challenger. Six minutes of boxing to go in this IBF World Bantamweight title fight. Sammy Stewart and the black and white trucks against the world champion. Mbulelo Botila from the Eastern Cape or the border region, call it what you like. And at this stage, after 10 rounds, well, Botila must be the distance from Poteng to the Eastern Cape ahead on points. Well, I have my scorecard, Leonard. I've got Botila eight points ahead. I've given uh, two rounds even. It's only because nothing happened in those rounds. Not that Stu did anything. It's only because uh, Botila was fighting in slow motion and possibly I thought they were even out but he's a good eight points ahead I've certainly been a slow motion by Taylor for much of it he's in command he's been there all the way through but just doing enough to take each round by a you know a comfortable points margin no knockdowns everything going to order Sammy Stewart trying his best but not up to this to the standard of a really good world uh, title contender but well, possibly again, it's a good thing for Batil having his first defense and having a good workout. If he'd have come in here and knocked him over one or two rounds, wouldn't have done him any good. So he had to work tonight and uh, he'd be only doing good for the future. Well, this is Batil back to the flooding right again. One punch, one punch, and then the occasional one, two. But he posing, posing more than actually fighting. When he fights a number one contender, when he has his manual defense, uh, he won't have to take it as easy as this because he'll have a fighter who's coming at him. Well, Sammy Stewart's still there. And uh, it never looked like going down at any time during the fight. He's taken uh, Batil's best shots, and he's come back at him. Only once right at the beginning when Batil caught him with that one good punch that staggered him back to the corner of the first round. We thought, oh, this is going to be a quick trip. But uh, Sammy Stewart showed a lot of courage, a lot of good movement, very good defensive type and a, and a stayer. That's what's counted. Well, he must be in good condition to stand in there for 10 rounds and take the shots he has taken throughout these 10 rounds. Tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't find
Brown, Sammy Stewart being invited by other holders of World Bantamweight Championships to fight him. Because they'll all see this is the kind of fighter you can go along with. He'll Stop. keep you going, but he won't beat you. Well, look at it, look at she signed. Okay, we've been here for about an hour and a half. Doing the same goddamn thing. Here. Come here, come on, here. Come here. Well, Chile, if this is the only round, I can tell you really that this guy's gonna try to knock your head off. So if I suggest you, I keep my hands up real high, because he ain't got nothing to lose. And if you got if you got the world title, you got a lot to lose. So if I was you, I'd go out there, keep my hands high, and work my punches, since it was gonna be a 12-round fight. Well, Tilly, don't get lazy out there, because this guy is trying to go ahead and knock your head off. You hear me? Well, here we go into the 12th and last round. Okay. I don't think many people okay. thought it was going to last this long. Most Box. critics thought, well, Batila, after the way he knocked out Harold Mester to win the world title in two rounds, he should be able to take out Sammy Stewart and run about the halfway mark. But here we are to the final round of this 12 rounder. Sammy Stewart still there. He hasn't done much other than survive the way through. He's taken a lot of good punches from Batila, but Batila's fought a very languid, easy-going type of fight. Been in command the whole way through, and looks like he's just going to coast his way through to a very, very comfortable decision. Well, it's, uh, his problem has been he's been throwing his punches from too far out, and uh, he should get in closer to get more power. He hasn't had the power in his punches. And this is possibly why he can't stop a man like Stewart. But all credit to Stuart, he's in excellent condition, and he stayed the 12 rounds, he still looks quite good at this stage. But uh, he's only hopeless with a wild knockout punch, and I don't think he's got that. Well, that one thing you notice there, Stuart slung over a right and it landed. Not a lot of power in it, but it landed. And Batilo, with this style that he's adopted now, with his hands held low, his body very erect, he's actually, his face is very, very open and he can be caught by a good overhand puncher. I think he'd have to be somebody a little bit taller, a little bit bigger than Sammy Stewart. But the teal are looking good, and he's been in total command all the way through. One would like to see him just be a bit more dramatic, a bit more forceful in the action. And you can see that Stewart's eyes are starting to pop behind the 12th round. That's because of all the punches he's taken right throughout the fight. Well, it's the same old pattern right throughout the fight. It hasn't been a very exciting fight. Completely one-sided. But Teal, the lazy style, is pushing out the punches, picking them up and landing the one shot. There's the left jab going through, two left jabs, and then the right follows. Now Batil is picking up the pace. Now he's going out to his man. Throwing right handers. Looking for the one short knockout. And he's, he's in command, but Stewart's still slugging back, trying his best, trying to keep him the fight. He's been there all the way through. He's a gallant little fighter, is this? Same old story again, but Teal throwing one punch and standing back. Exactly the same. But he knows he's in complete command, so why should he take a chance? Another couple of minutes and he's retained his title. Well, there's nothing that Sammy Stewart has left to do any damage, and that's the end of the fight. It's been 12 rounds. Title fight, Imbalela Batil, and I think we can safely say a very, very comfortable winner. We'll wait for the result. The judges' scorecards have to be added up, but I can't see any of them having given anything. Walk around, walk around. Zero and one, draw nine, ten that's point that's difference that's to Batil. It's completely one-sided fight. As Batil could complete command, but a little bit disappointing. I expected much more. As you see some action here from the 12th round. This possibly was a pattern right throughout the fight. The deal started so well in the first round, we thought we were going to be for the early night. 
but uh, he let uh, Stuart off the hook and right throughout the 12 rounds, throwing one shot at a time. Yes, there's the that jab going through. But you know, it shows Matila is really what you can call a languid fighter. I wouldn't call him a lazy fighter. He's languid. He's prepared to let the fight proceed at its own pace. If the other guy's not going to harm him, he's going to just go along and win as it goes. If the other guy's going to fight him and come at him, he'll stand up there and throw the big bombs, and that's when the, the Harold Mysteries of this world are in danger of being knocked out. Well, he was fighting at his own pace, which was good enough, and uh, he wins at the end of the day, so what more does he want? Uh, why take chances? And I think this is his style he's adapted, and uh, it's successful. He must be a good 10-point winner here tonight. Come out. Yes, it'll be interesting to see how these judges score the fight. But uh, I think we're right when we say we'll we'll talk about nine or ten point margin. It must be around about that. But in some note, they've got a lot of confidence in our South African officials. Uh, Lil Lamar Mitchell and Alfred oh. McConnell from South Africa and Stanley Christodoulou, the referee. And only one outsider, John Stewart from the USA. Well, John Stewart's been ref uh, judging fights for 13 years should know what's going on in this ring. He's one of the most experienced judges in the business. And here we go, but our ring announcer for the decision. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go down to the scorecards. Judge Mtia scores the fight 119 to 109. Judge Stewart scores the fight 118 to 110. And Judge Bukwana scores the fight 118 to 110. The unanimous and still the IBF Bantamweight Champion of the World. Umbalelo Bukutile. Well, that says we had it drawn. 10 points by one judge, 8 points by the other two. Fair decision. No doubt about it, Mbolela Batil, Batila, a very, very easy winner in the first defense of his IBF Bantamweight title. Well, I can tell you, one of the workmanlike defense, that's all it is, wasn't exciting, but he did enough, he won it, he retained his title, and what more do you want? He's still the champion. Now here's the slow-mo and the very commanding side of the world champion, Imbalela Batil there, an easy winner of this bout.